The second type of reaction is known as oxid oxidative cleavage of alkenes, and it can be used to produce ketones or carboxylic acids. Firstly, recall a reaction that allowed you to form diols from alkenes. The alkene is reacted with cold alkaline KNO4, uh, and the result is that the carbon-carbon double bond is broken to leave a single bond, and an OH group is added to each end. You don't have the two OHs that make it a diol. So why was it necessary for the permanganate to be cold? Permanganate is an extremely strong oxidizing reagent, uh, stronger than um, uh, dichromate. It's very reactive. By keeping the reaction cold, uh, the reaction is slowed down and it can be stopped with the diol as the product. If the reaction is warmed up, the result is that the carbon-carbon double bond is completely broken and the resulting molecular fragments are themselves oxidate, oxidized. And this process is called oxidative cleavage because the hydrocarbon is both cleaved, that is broken in two, and oxidized. And the reagent we use is hot acidified potassium permanganate. For instance, consider this reaction with 2-butene. Um, if you react this with hot acidified potassium permanganate, the double bond is cleaved, so it breaks down here. Uh, and the carbons on either side of the double bond now become the end carbons of two new molecules. So this carbon is here, and this carbon is here. And because they're the end carbons, and this is an oxidation reaction, they get oxidized as far as they can go, um, which is to a carboxylic acid. So you can see here we've got the C... Uh, OOH group and you've got the same on the other molecule here. So they're both carboxylic acids. In fact an aldehyde is produced first but potassium permanganate is such a strong oxidizing agent that it is essentially impossible to prevent the aldehyde from further reacting and becoming a carboxylic acid. If an aldehyde is required there are variations on this reaction using different reagents where it's possible to stop the oxidation at an aldehyde but we don't need to know those here. Let's look at another example. Here we've got 2-methylbutuene. The extra methyl substituent has an important effect on this reaction. Uh, this time, when the double bond is cleaved, the carbon in the left-hand fragment, fragment is not an end carbon, but instead a middle carbon. So it cannot become a carboxylic acid. Instead, it's oxidized to a ketone. And uh, the right-hand fragment, in this case, again becomes a carboxylic acid. Here's another variation. 2-methylprop1-ene. The double bond is broken. And again, the left-hand fragment becomes a ketone because it's on a middle carbon. But the right-hand fragment is only a single carbon, just one, all by itself. Uh, this at first forms methanoic acid, um, as you might expect, but in the presence of such a strong oxidizing agent as uh, potassium permanganate, methanoic acid is able to oxidize further to give carbon dioxide gas. So when oxidative cleavage, cleavage is performed on a double bond that is at the end of a molecule and a single carbon is cleaved off, that single carbon ends up being released as carbon dioxide gas.